Zolanguela o Veteronugo, a Rua Itabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrongo e na Bula FM, na Mandoa na Serre. Bula! A Langonoa, e Lutoca, do Talitaca na Bula FM, vai ter na Mandoa na Serre. Nem Bula Vinaca, na Regengo, a Bula FM na. É na casa. Nós vamos gostar muito. Aqui vem o nome Bula FM, nome do NSR no sul. Nem Bula vem na cá. Nós vamos gostar Jerry, é o meu lampasa. O do Barronga é na Bula FM, nome do A. Bula FM, nome do A NSR. In the news tonight, flying Fijians named for Rugby World Cup. More appear for alleged FMPF scam. And island leaders discuss climate change resolutions. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Five players will be featuring in their third Rugby World Cup for the Flying Fijians. Head coach John McKee today named a 32-member side for the World Cup. Two sets of brothers have also made the cut. Aquila Dama reports. Fiji squad has an exciting balance of youth and experience with 15 players to make their Rugby World Cup debut. But one of the six props named today will not make the trip to Japan. For a number of reasons, we've kicks, kept six props in, in, the, in the camp for next week and we'll make our final call before we travel to, to Auckland for the Tonga game. Notable omissions from the squad include Patrick Osborne, Eroni Sau and Albert Duisue. McKee says these players are just unlucky not to make the squad. And f for, from my side of the table, you know, it, it's, it's great that we've got this depth now that we can... The, we can see that there's real competition competition for places. We feel as though we, we've picked, or we know we've picked the squad, which is the, the best squad that can take us to the Rugby World Cup. Sam and Josh Matavesi, along with Joshua Tuisova and Filippo Nakosi, are the two set of brothers that have made the squad. Jacob and Moses Roluni were the last brothers to play together at the 1999 Rugby World Cup. Team captain Dominico Wanganimburotu says they have a special group of players. Still have uh, four to five weeks to go. And uh, the boys know that the Rugby World Cup is a, is a big year for, especially for Fiji and for this group. This is a special group and uh, leading this team is um, it's a great honour. Wangani Mburotu, Kempizi Maafu, Leone Nakarawa, Vereniki Ngoneva and Kini Murimurivalu are going for their third World Cup. The Flying Fijians have a 10-day camp from today before their final test against Tonga in two weeks' time at Eden Park in New Zealand. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Fiji Rugby Union today revealed that all its players in the squad have been insured in case of any injury from now until the end of the Rugby World Cup. Not revealing a lot about the financial side of things for their RWC budget, FRU Chief Executive John O'Connor says it amounts to a massive sum. O'Connor says the players were only released from their overseas clubs after FRU secured players' insurances to cover for any injury during the Rugby World Cup period. For Roy Tandolala reports, the players will be signing their contracts soon. The Fiji Rugby Union confirmed that they've taken extra steps to safeguard the players' welfare and prioritise their interests. For prof professional players, uh, we've had to take uh, additional uh, uh, insurance uh, to cover them for their loss of wages and so forth if they get injured. Eh? So World Rugby, uh, on behalf of uh, Tonga Samoa and, uh, and uh, Fiji, uh, organizes the insurance. FRU Chief Executive John O'Connor says the players will soon be able to have a read through the conditions and terms stated in their Rugby World Cup contract before signing them on a later date. It's a huge amount because uh, in terms of planning for the budget, uh, our preparation for the World Cup started with the qualifications in, uh, in uh, 2016. O'Connor adds the cost of their preparation for the Rugby World Cup next month is an accumulation from their qualification in 2016 till the end of the Rugby World Cup this year. They will be on contracts from now until the World Cup after the announcement of the team. Uh, but those are confidential matters between uh, the players. Uh, we deal with... Uh, the players representative uh, P PPA uh, in uh, determining the contracts for the players and they will be signing their contracts this, uh, uh, this week or early next week. With all logistics and insurance all sorted, the focus of the Flying Fiji side is set on the Rugby World Cup title with their first match to be played against Australia on the 21st of next month. Kuroi Tandulala, FBC News.
More people fronted court this afternoon for allegedly colluding and defrauding the Fiji National Provident Fund of over $31,000. A former FMPF and Ethel K Land Trust Board employee who faced similar charges in two previous matters appeared in the Suva Magistrates Court with four others facing additional charges. Pranita Prakash was in court and filed this report. The six are alleged to have colluded to use forged certificate of title to withdraw more than $31,000 from the FNPF accounts of the four accused. The first accused, Jack Edward Hiramatsu, a former FNPF employee, has been charged with five counts for allegedly forging various legal documents pertaining to the purchase of land. The second accused, Andi Mara Rufinangarani Valu, a former ILTB clerk, has been charged with one count of forgery for allegedly forging a certificate of title. The third accused, Moses Tikotikoda, also faces one count of using forged documents and one count of obtaining financial advantage by deception for allegedly obtaining $5,600 from FNPF. The fourth accused, Asenada Salu Salu, faces similar charges for obtaining $3,000. Matayasi Toa Masilada has been charged with one count of using forged document and one count of obtaining financial advantage by deception for allegedly obtaining $10,300 from FNPF using forged document. Chuta Tukana has been charged with the same two counts for allegedly obtaining $12,200 from FNPF using forged documents. The alleged incident took place in June this year. Hiramatsu and Garani Valu have been remanded in custody until Monday as the prosecution indicated that there is a pending investigation against them. The other four have been released on $200 cash bail with strict bail conditions. The matter has been adjourned to 30th August. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The search and recovery operation for the missing White Robinson 44 DQ HPT helicopter its pilot and the two-year-old passenger has been called off. The decision was made today following 13 days of search in the Natewa Bay Vanua Levu, where the helicopter crashed two weeks ago today. Our northern correspondent, Eleanor Tarangai View, has been closely following the developments of the operation. She files this final report from Natewa Bay. Two weeks ago, this medical evacuation flight from Naitamba Island crashed 3.6 nautical miles east of Kortasere going down directly into the Natewa Bay, along with its pilot, Captain Gilbert Parker, a two-year-old child, Epeli Jermaya, and his mother, Tere Wosakadi. It's likely that the helicopter broke up in smaller pieces, and with that strong current, probably has been carried several miles out of the search area. And so even with more extensive search resources, we probably still wouldn't find it. The flight was on its way to the Lambasa Hospital, taking two-year-old Jeremiah, who had a severe lung infection that needed urgent attention. In the 13 days that ensued the crash, only Kadi's body, a handbag and personal items, as well as pieces of the helicopter were found along the coastline from Kortasere to Navetau village. I'm satisfied that we've done everything we, we have been able to do to, to find the wreckage and the rest of the bodies. The investigator in charge has cited the infamous conditions of the Natewa Bay as a factor that led to the operation being called off. Much of the search area is over a large area of sunken reef, which is quite hazardous to sea craft and also to the specialist sonar equipment that the Navy uses. And secondly, the channels between the reef sections are very deep at the limit of diver capability. Despite the search and recovery operation being called off today, investigation into how and why the White Robinson 44 helicopter registration DQHPT went down in the Natewa Bay on the evening of August 2nd will continue and it will be months before the findings will be released. We'll look at other aspects of the investigation such as the qualifications, training and experience of the pilot, weather conditions at the time and other aspects. Over 50 personnel from the Fiji Police Force, the Fiji Navy and the Fiji Military Forces, along with villagers from the communities in the Sangani district, were directly involved in the operation, led by the Divisional Police Commander North, SSP Epara Mawanga. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. Pacific Island Forum leaders have clarified their stance on the final outcome of the PIPS meeting in Tuvalu last night. After 12 hours of discussions and negotiations, an agreement was reached. 
However, there were some mixed reactions after the meeting. Ali Kimbia with the story. Leaders were hesitant to reveal what transpired in the meeting. However, this was not the case for the Prime Minister of Tuvalu. But we uh, stressed very strongly during our exchange, in fact, between me and Scott, uh, and said, oh, you are concerned about your saving your economies uh, or your uh, uh, situation in Australia. Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison says the heated discussion was for the greater cooperation of the Pacific Island countries. The broader strategic competition you refer to was, was absent from the discussion yesterday completely. Um, it, that wasn't the context for any discussions. This was a family getting together and talking about the things that are, they're dealing with most practically. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern says that there's a great need for more clarity from the Pacific Island leaders. And clearly, of course, put a lot of effort into those statements and we should perhaps create the time within the agenda um, to discuss their statement in a, in a bit more detail. Um, that, that just hasn't been the case, I think, in successive PIFs. Both Australia and New Zealand have stated they will remain committed to the Pacific and its course to fight against climate change. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Up ahead, long journey to reach goals for new lawyers and youngsters spending holidays differently. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bola, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. It's been a long journey for some of the new lawyers admitted to the bar earlier today. And for one of them, from being a carpenter to becoming a fully-fledged lawyer, Rosiate Vembuli said it was a struggle, but one that was definitely worth it. Sanya Nimboila has the story. Once a carpenter in the Kaunrobe, Vembuli says while there were family and social obstacles in his path, today he achieved his goal and became a lawyer. My father is a fisherman, my mother is a villager. When I'm in that situation, in my extended family, uh, I was able to go through all these uh, difficulties and challenges, how to get the fees. For 38-year-old Longi Vati, sacrificing two years from his legal training to take care of his bedridden mother didn't stop him from returning to pursue his studies. I took a break in second semester in 2015, uh, whole of 2016 and 2017. There were a lot of factors, um, like I said, the challenges, uh, I had to raise some funds, and in addition to that, my mother had uh, went on a stroke. New lawyer 23-year-old Akash Prasad says leaving Lambasa to come to school in Suva was hard. Uh, when I came to Suva in 2015, uh, at first there was a lot of struggles going to another place, culture shock as well, and then... Uh, a, a totally different transition. While addressing the new lawyers, acting Chief Justice Kamal Kumar says the legal profession is considered a noble profession and requires them to act with integrity and dignity. The lawyers will be entrusted to solve problems by the members of the community in terms of their properties, homes, finances, business dealing, and family matters. 15 new lawyers were admitted to the bar today, 38 women and 12 men. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. A 53-year-old Chinese businessman convicted of obtaining property by deception and money laundering of $1.2 million will be sentenced next month. The court heard that between 2014 and 2016, Adong Zhang obtained the money by deception from the complainant, who was his business partner on the pretext that a property was being sold at $5.5 million instead of its actual price of $3.3 million. Three High Court assessors had found him guilty yesterday, and the High Court judge agreed with their opinion today. Zhang will be sentenced on September 16th. The increasing use of hard drugs has led to the establishment of a National Task Force Drug Harm Prevention Team. This is being done to help curb the social and economic costs of drug and substance abuse. Pritika Kumar reports. 
The chief executive of the NGO Volatambu Group, Kalesi Volatambu, says representatives from different ministries and NGOs will work together in terms of drug prevention. At the end of the day, you've got this task force, but what is more crucial and so poignant is the mere fact that we need the whole nation to come together to actually, you know, help the, the task force in order to actually raise awareness and actually, you know what, to lead the way to create a drug-free Fiji. So it's all about harm prevention and obviously this is drug harm prevention. A youth activist has highlighted the importance of awareness for the younger generation. Um, it is very important nowadays only because um, our youth and our new generation that's coming through right now, they need the best support and they need the best information to be given out to them because um, you know, there's like a lot of us around nowadays that need a lot more help. Everybody, including faith-based organizations, individuals and the young, has a role to play in drug prevention. We want the youth to come out properly um, and, and seek that help without feeling ashamed of anything or anyone um, with what they're going through. Early interventions are needed as the number of students with substance abuse problems is increasing every year, along with the number arrested by police and others treated at St. Giles Hospital. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. An academic and broadcast veteran, Professor Deborah Wagner, says quality journalism in a digital world is about serving your audience. In a public lecture last night at the University of the South Pacific, she spoke about the changing landscape globally and the mistrust of news. Maggie Boyle reports. While statistics note a drop in the trust in news, Professor Wagner explains media organizations continue to evolve. We are at a time in our history Mistrust, she says, has also been attributed to the plethora of social media. You know, aggregators like Google News and, and other types of um, and and Yahoo. Uh, there's a concern that the kind of information that you get by just using those sources is very unreliable. In the Q&A segment of the lecture, various concerns were raised. How fair and balanced is the coverage of Donald Trump? He's often accused of demonizing the media, but isn't it just required in kind? And when you're holding the powerful accountable, that means sometimes you're in opposition to people in power. And what the, the upshot is, is that people in power often feel like they're being mistreated. Uh, president Trump, he's not a typical president. How has he been with the perspective of the conservative columnist, he thinks that it's thrown many of the norms of journalism out the window. Professor Wigner has 17 years broadcast news experience and currently teaches the journalism program at the University of Mississippi. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Children from the Out Islands of Fiji continue to inspire the crowd of Furnival Park in Suva. This is choirs consisting of children from the 58 divisions throughout Fiji Grace the stage to sing of spiritual values and messages. Josiah Nunga reports. A choir group from Lakemba in Laos spent $50,000 that enabled them to participate in this year's annual festival of praise. We have invested a lot of money in the build-up to this annual event. We spent $40,000 to charter a boat and $1,960 for our accommodation. The group featured Sunday school members who are bold enough to grace the stage for praise and worship. I love singing. I use this platform to boost my talent in singing. Meanwhile, year 8 student Ms. Wata Ratsubula says his school holiday has been worthwhile. This is my first time participating in this event. What a way to kickstart my two weeks holiday. Singing is indeed a passion for these two youngsters. When I return to the village, I will share my experience to my friends. I really enjoyed participating in today's event. The participation of choirs from churches in the 58 divisions throughout Fiji was the highlight of today's event. The number of crowds that will flock Furnival Park is expected to increase, particularly as the annual Methodist Bazaar draws its curtain tomorrow. Chose Inununga, FBC News. And it's business time now with Koroi. Thank you, Jackie. Coming up, performing rights want members to register. And in growing PG drill rig to help Fijians. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Shamiz.
Lisa. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Mirchi FM because it's hot. My name is Rajnita Lata and I'm from Vatulaloba. Uh, and we listen to Mirchi FM sunta hai because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. Our name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house, and we are in the house of Mirchi FM. We are in the house of Mirchi FM. Dago Mama. Mirchi FM. It's hot. In business, the Fiji Performing Rights Association is urging local artists to register their songs and businesses in order to get copyright royalty. Tepra Chairman Saimoni Vuatalevu says that is a major focus of the association. Vuatalevu adds the association is a legal custodian to safeguard the rights of local composers registered with them. They must make sure that they come to our office to, to register their work, to become our member. They don't pay any fee. They just have to, uh, if you have a recording, uh, your song has been played, you are entitled to be a member and also register your song. Time for Gary from HFC to give us the latest from the money markets. The U.S. dollar held on to gains today after a surge in U.S. retail sales eased concerns about the world's top economy. Traders, however, cautioned against reading too much into one piece of data given the growing risks. The greenback was on course for a weekly gain against safe haven currencies such as Japanese yen and Swiss franc, pointing to some respite for frayed nerves after fears of recession. Data showing American consumers continue to splurge in July came as a positive relief to investors after U.S. bond markets sounded alarms. In the U.K., sterling was marginally higher and on course for its first weekly gain since mid-July, as positive data on retail sales and consumer prices showed the British economy is in better shape than some investors had feared. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Rinaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. Despite the fact the foreign exchange markets were volatile, the Fiji dollar was on the rise today. It rose against all the currencies we cover, even the U.S. greenback and the Chinese yuan, with the exception of the Australian dollar, where it was down slightly. Taking a look at the commodities, prices were mixed. Oil price dropped slightly below $55 a barrel. Gold continued to rise, hitting $1,522 per ounce and silver closed down at 17.24 per ounce. The purchase of two new multi-drill rigs and supporting equipment will see more Fijians in the maritime islands and rural areas provided with easy access to sustainable water sources in the future. Commissioning the two new multi-drilled rigs yesterday, Minister for Lands and Mineral Resources Ashnil Sudakar highlighted that the purchase will help enhance their stance on the sustainable and national development goals. The minister says this will also help Fijians who are often affected by long dry seasons and provide a water source for their farms as well. This new equipment cost approximately $4.2 million. For the last two financial years, a total of 528 households with a population of 3,107 in the maritime islands and villages, settlements, schools have, been, have benefited so far from groundwater sources, some of which have experienced critical water shortages annually, especially during the dry seasons. That's it from Business Tonight. Sports is up next with Jamie. Thanks, Corey, and good evening. Up ahead in sports... McKee confident Fiji has the goods to make the World Cup playoffs. And Reese ready for biggest game of his life. This and more coming up. Radio Fiji Flying Fijians coach John McKee is confident he has selected the best players for the Rugby World Cup 
Mickey says the team has what it takes to advance Fiji into the Rugby World Cup quarterfinals. This is a group of players that I believe can really challenge to get to the playoffs from Pool D and a, and a group of players that can really make Fiji proud. The message I send to our players is that with selection for the Flying Fijians and Rugby World Cup 2019 comes a responsibility and that responsibility means that they have to give their absolute best every single day. Fiji and Sevu Reese is all set to make the Bledisloe Cup debut for, for the All Blacks. Vodafone Kachi Rugby Sponsorship Rep William Tambuya says the dust did not settle following the Dean's Rugby competition. Tambuya says like the Dean's, Kachi Rugby is a huge gathering of school players, families and friends from all over the country. Like the Dean's, this brings together all the uh, rugby playing schools or primary schools, but this is a record, the first ever time they brought in schools from as far as Onoilau, uh, which is, you know, geographically, that's closer to Tonga, further than Fiji and also as high up as Nandaribatu, which is uh, closer to the clouds and further down than ground level. So that's the intensity of the amount of work that's been done on ground level by the teachers, the ministry, and uh, also FRU, who have done a lot of good work to bring all the students. It's not easy to bring this amount of players. Central Primary Schools Netball Association President Timaima Nailolo says a lot of work has to be done to raise the standards of the sport in Fiji. Nailolo also believes there is a desperate need to have more netball courts across the country to make the sport more accessible for young girls. The executives of the Fiji Netball Association have to work hard on our part because uh, the support from the districts are there. It is the executives of the Fiji Netball Association that has to do a lot of uh, work in uh, regards to sponsorship. Because in that way, I believe that uh, these um, competitions eh, will be able to move up to the level that we are hoping to get. Arsenal have confirmed that two players involved in a carjacking attempt by an armed gang last month will play this weekend in the Premier League. They were left out of the Gunners' uh, season opener over security fears. That's it from Sports Tonight and uh, New Media. Recent research suggests social media itself isn't really affecting mental health. Details coming up. Umesh Chandra, our Kanta Chandra, my wife. We are very good to listen to the radio, very good program, number one radio. Kumar Sami Naika, Gongo Alibu Latoka, Radio Fiji 2, we are very good to listen to the radio. Kumar, I am very good to listen to the radio. Radio Fiji 2, the country of the country. Weather time now with Angie. Welcome to the weather world. We have made it to Friday. Woohoo! The weekend is here and it looks pretty good. Far better than what they're going to get for the Very Slow Cup at Eden Park in Auckland tomorrow. It'll be a chilly 15 degrees with a chance of rain there. But here, a fantastic weather weekend in store and a full moon too. Now, in the west, a dry day with just a tiny bit of scattered cloud. Great for the western results. Eastwards from back harbour to Suva, it was sunny with some cloudiness and the occasional light shower. Expect a chance of light showers overnight. And up north, more of the same generally clear skies with some scattered cloudiness. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 1.28 a.m. with high tide at 7.34 p.m., sunrise at 6.24. For tomorrow, it should be much light today. If you're looking for something to do, don't forget the FRU Family Fun Day at Albert Park. Tomorrow's temps, major centres will be around 30. And looking further on to Sunday, light showers in the bag which won't be around for long. So, have a lovely weekend and it's back to you, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, are you happy with the Flying Fijians team that has been named? We 
great team and they're brilliant. And I wish them all the best. And I know they'll make it to, um, they'll move up the table. And I think they just do, they just do good. So I wish them all the best. Once I was a PG rugby, and the name of the PG team. I need to, every region, they need to support the team. Uh, it's exciting and I look forward to them playing. And uh, I know they will do their best and will make the country proud. Go Fiji! The coach knows the team very well because he trains them and uh, he knows their fitness. I think Mikey already selected with a strong side. I think that team already been selected, will play well, will perform well in the World Cup. Recapping the main stories for tonight, flying Fijians name for Rugby World Cup, more appear for alleged FMPF scam, and island leaders discuss climate change resolutions. Now for these stories and others, remember to tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. A poll question this week we're asking, should there be extra penalties for inmates caught with contrabands? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day. Our flying Fijians have been named and these two men, our coach John McKee and skipper Dominico Wanganing Borotu, carry the hopes of a nation. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. Follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. We love to the FM. Today we have rocks. Bulaminaka, I'm Linda Form. I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.